Hello everybody and welcome to a Darkest Dungeon class review. Haven't done one of these in a very long time, but I'm excited to get back into it. Today we're looking at Marvin Sayo's The Wraith class. As with all Marvin Sayo classes, they have extremely high production value, and I would recommend installing this mod. It's got cool art, it's got a unique play style, and I think a special niche that makes it different than other classes. And it's pretty good overall, you know, I actually do like playing this class. So let's get right into the stats. You have 47 max HP, which is above average, but not by much. You have 25 dodge, which basically is average and is like, you know, kind of eh. You have 5 speed, and you know, I am a huge proponent of speed in this game. I think it's one of, I think it's probably the best attribute to have in the entire game, along with accuracy. And for this class in particular, to have mediocre speed is a letdown. So we're going to have to work on that through trinketing. Next up is crit. Base high crit of 9 is uh, really, really good. And you have decently high uh, crit negatives on some of these skills and positives on others, like plus 11 here, plus 10 here. But some of these other ones only have plus 3. This has minus 5. This has minus 5. You know, so your crit is kind of wily. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't build crit into this character. Maybe you do. I don't, I don't know. I personally wouldn't. Um, average damage, roughly, but a lot of, again, a lot of what you're doing is stunning, so your damage um, doesn't matter for half of your abilities, but the other time, it does matter for others. Um, into resistances, we have 100 stun resist, which is slightly above average, 80 blight resist, which is really, really bad, 90 bleed, which is average, 100 debuff, which is good and above average, we have 100 move, which is about average, 80 trap disarm, which is average and is, like, not too great, and 30 disease, which is average, and the wraith moves 1-1. One, one. All right, so let's get into the uh, Wraith skills. I just want to talk real quickly. Let's look at the movement here, uh, or the positioning. 1, 2, anywhere. 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. Okay. Next, let's look at the damage mods. Full damage mod. No damage. No damage. No damage. No damage. Decent damage. Somewhat decent, somewhat decent damage. These two have bleeds. Okay. So, if you didn't really get that because I went through it quickly, the only damaging ability that like does real damage can hit in one or two everything else is two or three except for the mark and the mark does no damage so you're kind of stuck in position two unless you want to do like no real damage and you want to rely on bleeds which you could do i think reap is a good ability though i like having at least some form of damage on my characters <laughs> that isn't relying on dots so that kind of sticks him in position two, which means if you're in a party that moves a lot or a party that is susceptible to being moved, you're in a bit of a pickle. All right, so Reap on, on its own, 105 base accuracy isn't too high. It's fine. Um, really, really good crit mod, though. You're at 19 base crit at level six. You do more damage if the target is below uh, its two-thirds maximum hit points. You do more damage versus bleeding and more damage versus marked want to do a quick comparison to um collect bounty same accuracy uh same crit mod if you would count a uh, weapon crit and character crit uh 35 damage versus human is the same as 35 damage versus bleeding and 90 versus marked is slightly more on the bounty hunter than 75 versus marked here but it also has more damage if the target is below two-thirds hp so overall this is a pretty good ability it's basically the same as collect bounty Except Collect Bonnie can be used from uh, position 3. And Human is more common than uh, Bleeding is, I would think. And Because, you know, human characters are always human. Not every enemy is always Bleeding. And oftentimes when you focus down characters, like, you'll... Unless you're... If you use, like, Hound's Harry, I think is... Whatever the one that hits all four on the Hound Master. Can I find a Hound Master? relatively quickly which one is it yeah hounds harry hits all four you'd bleed every target and that would be really really cool um but if it's a single target attack then you probably would just focus it down you know and kill it so you would be do good damage but like not necessarily won't last for as long point being i'd rather i think i would rather have plus versus human than plus versus bleeding so reap is a good ability and it's kind of as a default on this character because you want it to have some form of decent damage we're going to see that a lot of these things here, um, like guillotine and, or I guess, I guess it's actually just guillotine, have plus versus stunned and plus versus marked. And this has plus bleeding and plus marked, 
which is kind of a problem for this character because it is a marker and a stunner. We'll get into that in a bit. Next is Death Sentence. It's just your standard mark, really high accuracy. It debuffs her crits received, which is a decent uh, thing, actually. Like, dodge is kind of iffy. Like, minus dodge marks is iffy if you have high accuracy anyway. Minus prop marks, I think, are always good, but not necessary if something doesn't have prop to begin with. But prop plus crits received is, is actually quite nice. So I, I like this as a, as a mark, but um, do I like it? Is this the guy who should be marking? I don't know about that. So I don't think this is a particularly strong ability, um, and I'll get, in, get into that in a second. And that's because Incarcerate, snap, or Sap, and Chain Gang stun fucking every single um, row possible. So let's just, let's just go in order. Incarcerate has some yeah, mediocre accuracy, no damage, minus crit. You hit someone in row 3 or 4, and you pull them forward 2, and you stun them. That's really nice. Really, really nice for characters like Lepers or Crusaders or any other character that can't hit rows. Um, or even something like a Bounty Hunter with um, Finish Him, who needs to, to have plus damage versus stunned. I know that can hit row 3, but if the guy's in row 4, you'd pull him forward and you'd hit him then. So, um, the pull and the stun is really good because that means that enemy can't um, use on its turn to move back. Some enemies can move back on their turns with their skills, and they can't if they're stunned. So you keep them there for an extra turn. Incarcerate is a really, really good ability. And again, the dangerous enemies are typically in the back. It's not the Bone Defender or the Cultist Brawler. It's the Cultist Acolyte or the um, the Bone Courtier, the guy with the goblet, or, you know, like uh, the Witch. And those characters are in the back, so stunning them and pulling them forward is awesome. Sap, I think, is a weaker ability because what it does is it does a little bit more damage than Incarcerate. And it hits the front two, which is useful. Um, has a plus crit, has a good stun again. Minus four speed is great, but uh, I don't care about really debuffing the speed of the front enemies. Again, who is the front enemies? The Bone Defender. Do I need to debuff the speed of the Bone Defender? No. Of the, the I don't know, any of the pigs in the front? No. Um, the fucking, like spiders in the front no not really like anything that's in the front typically has a lower speed and you probably kill the stuff in the back anyway so you'd be using incarcerate like this is good at the end of a fight when you uh already get the stuff up to the front you you could say you could double stun you could incarcerate and then sap but the odds that you get a double stun off are really rare unless you like double or triple stack trinkets with stun percentage um so i wouldn't count on that but this is a, this is a pretty okay ability it is a stun like stuns are still good and minus st speed is really good it's just that it can only hit targets that typically don't need minus speed or need to be stunned immediately which is the problem if you can get someone else to bring someone forward like if you have two wraiths or, or some other way to pull and then stun that's great but at that point just use incarcerate um chain gang is really cool it's like barbaric yop in that you can stun two targets at once it stuns 2 and 3, which is kind of useful. Um, stunning 3 is good. Stunning 2 at the same time is also good. So, like, double stuns on their own are awesome. And it doesn't have, like, a shitty stun percentage. It's not like you have 100% base, but you get two targets and you just hope it lands. No, you have full stun chance and you hit two targets, so that's fucking awesome. Um, no crit, with, but that's fine. Um, you're going to stun them. You don't, like, you don't do damage, so critting would only be for the increased stun chance, not for the extra damage. This is a lovely ability. I, I, I really do like Chain Gang. And what this does is it kind of makes Sap and Incarcerate both a little bit weaker. Makes Sap especially weaker because that means if you're going to use Sap, um, that means you'd use it to like hit someone in row one because you can already hit two and three in Chain Gang. Same with Incarcerate if you want to hit a three. But I think stunning row four is better than stunning row one. So I think Incarcerate is a better ability than Sap is. All right, next up is Guillotine. Guillotine is the same 105 accuracy, somewhat decent damage, not really, um, really high crit, but that damage is offset if you uh, have higher bleed, and you will always crit if the target is at the bottom quarter of their HP. Okay, so you do more bleed amount versus stunned and marked enemies. That's cool, I like that. The issue is that this guy has, a, has three fucking stun abilities, three of his seven are stuns, and the fourth one is marked. So, what is he supposed to do? Stun them, and then somehow go in front of them next time? I guess that's where you could sap. 
like you could sap someone in position two, debuff their speed, you'd go in front of them next time, and then you would uh, have plus bleed amount on them. Okay, but that's about it. Because how else, like, if they went in, if they went in front of you the first time, and then you stun them, they'll go in front of you the second time and be unstunned. If they go after you, you'll stun them. They won't be stunned. In your next turn, you won't. They won't be stunned, so you won't get the extra bleed amount. So you somehow need another guy who stuns, or another guy who marks, which is fine. You would build a mark party, and having more stunners is is objectively good. But like, when three, when this guy can stun every row, he is the stunner, right? Like, why would I bring a wraith and then another primary stunner? Like, you could bring, like, I don't think, um, like, the Bounty Hunter is a decent example of a guy who's, like, a good mix of a, of a damage dealer and a stunner. Like, this is cool. Um, the Inquisitor here is a primary stunner. Like, he does, like, stun, a, a shitty damage ability, and a really good heal. Um, the Crusader has uh, a decent stun attack, but he also has, you know, like, minus stress. He has a heal. He has a, a good attack. The Occultist has a stun. But he is oftentimes in the back, so you could maybe do um, Abyssal Artillery or the, or the Reconstruction Heal. So those are guys that would do other stuff. But the, the Wraith is a stunner. Like, he, he stuns everything. He can stun the entire enemy roster just like in, in you know, around the world style. So, I don't like versus stunned or versus marked. Because he's already stunning. Or he's marking. Like, the versus marked is fine. But you know what? I'd rather have them plus bleed amount versus marked. Plus 75% damage versus marked. I understand you can hit row 3 with this, but you can hit row 2. So it is really only good versus row 3. Because in row 2, I'd rather just use Reap. Because Reap has higher damage. Especially, like, if they're marked, especially. And if they're bleeding already, which you're, they probably will be. Because <laughs> you're trying to do bleed amount. Um, then it's just, like, better. So Reap, I think, is just a better ability than Guillotine. That was a long-winded explanation. And we're going to go into Hook and Slice. Um, hook and Slice is pretty okay. The reason I like Hook and Slice is because it can hit every single uh, row. It doesn't do much good damage. That's really good crit. It shuffles, which is, again, kind of nice in the same way that you might want to um, pull the back. You might want to shuffle the back and hope that you can pull forward. Um, it's cool. It The bleed, again, is nice. The issue is bleed is sometimes, you know, you it's not good for every dungeon. But that's, a, that's its own thing. Um... It's fine, but again, like, the issue is it's not great damage, and it's not as good as a stun, right? Like, I feel like, I feel like I'd rather just do a lot of stuns and have another... Like, if I have a guy who has the capability to stun fucking everyone and their mother, I'll just get other damage dealers. I'll, I'll take Reap and do other damage. I don't necessarily need Guillotine or Hook and Slice, because I can just stun and have someone else do the damage. And five bleeds, fine. It's not bad, but it's fine. Um... If anything, this is a worse bleed than Guillotine, just because Guillotine will just do more bleed amount versus those things if it ever gets it off. And this does worse damage than Guillotine as well with the worse damage mod. That's a, like, that's the same crit, but it's good crit. So I guess that's more damage, or that's longer bleed. But again, you'd probably kill the enemy. So I'm kind of underwhelmed by these last two right here. All right, going on to the Wraith's camping skills, we start with Heartless. A time cost one for minus 25% stress and minus 25% virtue chance. So you basically will always be guaranteed an affliction, but the odds that you get an affliction if you're um, not getting really bad RNG are actually pretty low, and especially low if you have minus 25% stress. So this is pretty good. I would use this for uh, time cost one basically all the time. I think this is totally fine. If you have a stress healer, this really shouldn't be that bad. Next is silent time cost two plus accuracy plus crit if the torch is low. Good if the torch is low. 15 accuracy when you have low torch is really nice. But otherwise, obviously, it's useless. Next is Headhunter. Time cost 2, 15% damage versus humans. Um, I mean, it's nice, I guess. There's better things I think you could be doing than uh, Headhunter. Like, I think even, a, even an Encourage might be better than Headhunter. If you're going against a boss that's human, this is obviously key. But the you're counting on human enemies only, and that's really hard to do, especially when you start adding mods into the game. There's not a lot of human enemy mods, I feel, except maybe the Warrens, because everything's like half human there. But there's a lot of other shit, so I don't know if this is really good. Um, finally, we have Drifter. Drifter is nice. It Again, only if you're low light, though. It's 30% scouting chance, which is huge, but your scouting chance, I believe, goes down uh, when you're in low light. So it is it 
it's not like it's 30% on high light. It's you go down to low light and then you get a little bit more. So it's still a really, really good thing, but only good if you're at low light. So what would I use? I would use Heartless. I would use Encourage. Um, if you're going low light, I would go these two. Otherwise, I would probably just go like this. Maybe even take like Wound Care um, over this. Because if you're staying high light, you're, you're never going to need these. So it doesn't matter. Um, if I had to pick between the two of them, I'd probably uh, take Scouting Chance. Because I'm already going to be uh, prepping for accuracy like, with my trinkets. So that's cool. All right. On to skills. Um, let's go. So we want Reap because we want to do some damage, right? Uh, we're probably not going to do Marks because we can stun a lot. So Chain Gang, out of these three stuns, Chain Gang is probably the best because it, um, you know, just stuns two targets and stuns two and three, which is good. Next thing I would do is I'd probably take Incarcerate. I think Incarcerate is more synergy than Sap does. You could honestly even go Sap, although I think that's pretty overkill. Out of the last two of these, I would go Hook and Slice. Because this is a way to get any sort of damage on uh, rows 3 and 4. And Reap can only be used in 1, 2. So if you somehow get pushed into row 3, then you want to be able to have some damage. So then you use Hook and Slice. Guillotine, I don't think is that great. The Mark, I don't think is that great. And Sap, I think, is the worst of the three stuns. But that's just me. How would I Trinket the Wraith? Well, he's a stunner, so he needs really high speed, and he needs really high accuracy to land those stuns, and he also needs stun percentage. So, we basically just set it. Speed, stun percentage, and accuracy. If you're going low light, you can maybe drop accuracy and then, like, camp on the first mission, on the first room, but that seems really dumb. Uh, somehow, what you could maybe do is, so he starts with 5 speed, which uh, is okay, what you could maybe try to do is if you could somehow lower his speed like really really lowly then you would go you would go last on the first round which is basically equal to first on the second round although it's almost certainly easier to just bump the speed up like if you yeah, i have a plus two speed quirk most of i'm at seven get a plus two speed trinket or something and i'm at nine and i'm gonna go ahead of a lot of enemies so you want speed, because you just want to get those stuns off, especially against the high speed back enemies. You want stun percentage, so your stuns actually land. Especially if you start trying to double stun people. Like, you might have stunned um, some guy from row 4, brought him up to row 2, and now you want to chain gang and hope for a double stun as long as well as getting uh, both. Because you could just incarcerate again, or you could chain gang and hope for a double. So, stun percentage really helps here. Um, you could, I, I notice I'm not saying plus damage. I really don't think this is that big of a damage dealing class, which is why, like, I mean, you really, you could almost drop hook and slice and take the death sentence mark. That would be my next option. Um, like, I think if you, pro you might have a, a secondary stunner who can stun row one and then, you know, you just like, there's, his damage is certainly good, but I think his, his stuns are so awesome. He'd be a better damage dealer if his stuns weren't so fucking baller. That's his pro so that's his problem with him being a damage dealer. Is he's such a good stunner that I just will get other damage dealers. Um, finally, and most importantly, look at the art. That looks really cool. That looks really cool. That looks really cool. And that looks really cool too. So it's <laughs> fucking awesome uh, artwork there by Marvin Sayo and whoever the art guy is i don't i don't know but they're both great work um so how would i play this class i would play it in position two um stun a shit ton just chain gang all the time incarcerate all the time you can reap for um to get those low hp kills and then you can hook and slice if you need to finish off a target in like row four or you want to shuffle somehow and you can't uh I mean, I don't know if this is guaranteed but this is damage and a shuffle which might be better than incarcerate for you i don't know some things need to be in like row four specifically so you could just try and like shuffle them out i don't know anyway this is a really good class i would definitely recommend downloading it it's balanced so there's a lot of classes out there that are really good and really broken but this class is very very well balanced it fills a niche that i don't think is really in the main game the bounty hunter is a pretty decent stunner like he can stun every single row as well and he does have mark he does have big hits he has a pull he has a bleed he, this guy is very similar to the bounty hunter but I think the Bounty Hunter is slightly different. I think the Bounty Hunter is more damage-focused. 
Um, like the, you do use collect bounty and finish him. I think I use that very, very frequently in my bounty hunter. Whereas on this guy, I am doing more primary stuns and you are a better stunner than the, uh, than the bounty hunter is. So I like this class. Do download it. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.